likeness, eh? Like your wife like that. That's the only way to explain it to him. So in First Peter 3, again, you see where God was teaching men how to love. He said, treat your wife according to knowledge so that your prayers will not be hindered. He didn't say treat your wife according to knowledge because she'll be happy. He no consign man. He said, if you treat her right, your prayers. Ah, a man understands that one. And if you're getting what I'm saying. He's selfish by nature. So her biggest need is love. That's his biggest struggle. He doesn't know how to love. He needs to learn it. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So when I was counseling that couple, so I asked her, she said, what's the problem? I asked her, what's the problem in this marriage? She said, he doesn't love me. I said, okay, you, do you love him? She said, yes. You see, women have problem with love. He said, yes, I love him. I said, what do you do for him? He said, I call him. I check up on him at work. I cook his food and all these things. She doesn't understand that those things are not a man's primary need. His biggest need is what? Respect. So because she's doing all these loving things, and the man is not doing the loving things back, she's now disrespecting him. If you want to love a man, eh? Respect him. When he does those unloving things, still don't be rude to him. That's how he sees love. He sees love as respect. The reason why marriages worldwide are failing, you know, I talked about love last week also. The reason why marriages worldwide are failing is that women have hijacked the principle of marriage to Love each other in marriage, your marriage will work. It's not in the Bible. It's a women doctrine. Bible doctrine is women respect husbands love. That's Bible doctrine. But social women doctrine, because love is important to them. So they also assume that love is important to men. It's not. For instance, if a man finishes eating and a woman packs the plate, the man sees it as respect. If a woman is eating and the man comes to help her pack her plate, she sees it as love. It's the same action. But we are seeing life from two different perspectives. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? <laughs> same action. Same action. So you will never see God tell women, love men. No, women are natural lovers. They love. And that's what's annoying to them because the way they are loving you, they expect you to love me back now. It's a big struggle for him. And you see, the interesting thing about men, see, when God was saying women respect men, it's not because God was trying to honor men. God is trying to help you. Oh, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Some people think that when they wrote the Bible, that God was being partial. No! If you know anything about God, you know he's very impartial. There's nothing partial about God. When God was telling women to respect men, he wasn't trying to honor men. No! He's trying to say, look, if you want the result you want out of a man, eh? You motivate him better by respecting him, not by insulting him. Because when you insult a man, when you tell a man, you, you don't need any good husband. See how you're meant to do it. It doesn't motivate men to do better. What it tells me is that I'm a bad husband. I'm a failure at this. And men's reaction to an area they're not doing well is to run. Not to improve. Because women think if I nag him, he will improve. No. The Bible says when you nag a man, he will go to the corner of the roof. Or he will go to the wilderness. Men hate to stay where they are not doing well. Everything about men is ego, ego. So if there are some way they feel I'm a failure at this, what that tells them is that move to an area you are good. So you see a man, his wife is always telling you, yeah, you this man, he will go to where they are just football because he knows all of Arsenal players. That's why he's a top dog. Or he will move to business realm. Or to work around because there he's respected, there he's good at that. But that marriage thing he's not good at, and you are putting insult on his head, he will carry his small bag emotionally. He's still in the house with you, but emotionally he's avoiding you at all costs because he knows I'm not good at this marriage thing. And truly, without good coaching, very few men can be good at marriage because it doesn't come to us naturally. Women are way more complex and complicated. Men don't know that everything a woman says is a question. Everything is a question. And you must know the right answer. So the formula I give men, because it's, the questions are so varied, you know, it's not an exam you can copy. Because your own question can come in a different form from my own. But the formula is the same. The formula is saying, do you love me? That's the question. 
So if your wife calls you at 10 o'clock, say, ah, you are not coming home tonight, or where are you by this time? She's not asking for traffic report. Many will say, ah, you know Third Mainland now, you know that uh, Kosovo Junction, you know that the one place there's photo, is not traffic report she's asking you. The answer is, hey baby, I can't imagine I'm still outside. But like, I miss you and the kids so much. That's the answer. Where are we going to live? You say, I would like us to live close to your working place because I don't want you to stress yourself. The only statement is, do you love me? Do you believe that men can marry second wife? Do you love me? Somebody get what I'm saying? Once you understand that, your answer must co correlate with that. Don't give objective answer. This is not an exam. She's not asking for a genuine opinion. I don't know if it's this service I shared that a couple were having a discussion. It was in this service, I can't remember. A couple was having a discussion about the celebrity that married the second wife. And the wife just said, that's how this man just went to use another woman to scatter a peaceful family. They were living together in harmony in one house. Now, scatter the family. And no more peace. The man was giving counsel that nobody asked him. He said, no, he didn't scatter the house. All he needs to do now is to have two separate homes so that they won't be... I said... Because she thought the wife was talking about a hypothetical case. No, every discussion between you and your wife is about two of us. If you see one animal killing his children, and your wife says, see how this dog is clean, eating his children, and you say, that's how dog behave. No. It's about our children. Will you take care of it? That's the question. Women personalize everything, whether it concerns them or not. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? <laughs> so... So, naturally speaking, most men won't do well in marriage. Naturally speaking, except their thoughts. Their, their, their way of thinking is very off. So, she's very... So, so that lady that asked said, Oh, I text him, I call him. You see, that's not her husband's major need. What the man wants is that, even when I forget to text you back, when he gets back, still lovingly greet him respectfully and say, You didn't even reply my text. You always forget. Say it respectfully. But most men be like, You! Were you chatting with that girl? Why did you... you know, it will be attack. Because she finds it hard to control her emotions when she's upset. She finds it hard to control her attitude. Some don't use words. Some use attitude. You've never entered the gate, but you can sense <laughs> that there's a problem. <laughs> You're calling the house, calling your brother in the house. Say, John, what's in the for house? At the front of the street, but I don't feel okay. When did it happen? Where, madam? She they sing? Say yes. Which song? Because depend on the song. If the song, I'll know that there's problem. <laughs> I have song that if Pastor Mitchell is singing, I know there's problem. I've forgotten the songs now, but those days, like, she had a song. Once she starts singing that song, I know that I've committed offense. I'll just be thinking, say, which offense I commit now? Because those songs don't come out except it's, those, are, those songs are battle songs. <laughs> they don't come out for nothing. Anytime those songs are out, there's battle, it's a battle cry. The battle cry songs. So, her attitude, she can't control it. Because she, she's a feeler. She's a feeler. It's burning in her. And women are not good at postponing something. Men are very good at, if we have issue, we can talk about this in next year. Men can control. Men, men are not as emotional. If a man like to even avoid the issue. So a man can, in his mind, say, this issue, eh? we'll go discuss them next year. But the woman, if you don't discuss it, now, now. Ah, that time is burning. And that's what the Bible now asks her to do that. That thing that's born in there, leave it. Ah, it's a big struggle for women. Respect and submission is the biggest challenge for women, but it's the biggest need for men. Loving your wife is the biggest need for women, biggest challenge for men. Men don't know about love at all. Love is not a feeling, you know. Love is simple things like loyalty. I chatted with that girl. You don't love your husband or your wife. That's what, that's what she sees as love. Loyalty. A lot of men struggle in that one. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Because most men are so selfish. So sacrificing is hard for them. Doing things just for her good. Letting her have her way. 
It's tough for men. Because men are natural head. They are naturally heady. That's why they are the head. Because they are heady. They are rigid. They are not flexible. Somebody get what I'm saying? So, in my many years of counseling, 99% of the time, when I've asked men what their problem is in this marriage, there's only one thing they say. She doesn't respect me. And because of how she talks, how she, he sees lack of respect. But one man told me that I, I can forgive adultery, but I can't forgive disrespect. That's what he told me. I'm just trying to help women to see how important it is. Because it doesn't make sense to you, remember. I'm telling you, it's, 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 that's what guys like. That respect. Even if he messes up, eh? If you are sparking for him, still spark for him with respect. Let your, let your husband know that this woman, no matter what I do, she will never disrespect me. She can give me her opinion. No? She can tell me how badly I hurt her, but she would never. And in my 17 years of marriage, I give it to my wife. Oh. She has never spoken disrespectfully. Never. <laughs> and it's not because I'm perfect. To forget that I'm, I'm a relationship coach and all that. I'm not perfect at all. I make plenty of mistakes. But she has never disrespected me ever. Never. So, you used to give your husband that kind of a confidence. And the same thing with the wife. 99% of the time when I've cancelled women in the marriage crisis, the, their challenge is that he doesn't love me. I've never heard a woman say he doesn't respect me, never. The, she always says he doesn't love me. Because that thing you call disrespect, she sees it as lack of love. It's still love. It's still tied to love for her. That's why God told men, love your wives. The only place in scripture where God told women to love husband is in Titus chapter 2. He said, let the older women teach the younger women how to love their husbands. That word love is not love as we know it. It's not even the same love used in Ephesians for men. That word love there is filio. It's friendship. So they are saying, women, be your husband's body. Be your husband's guy. He should be able to gist with you without you turning the discussion to an emotional argument. Is somebody get what I'm saying? He should be able to talk to you and you deal with it without making it emotional. He needs, men need recreational companionship. He's watching football, watch with him. And the good thing about you, you can do more than one thing at the same time. So as you're watching, you can be playing your game or watching on that thing. Or you watch more. They score, go, you say you score. No, thank you. Just, yeah, just recreational companionship. But most women don't want to be friends with their husband. They only want romance with their husband. Not only that, in the world of men, friendship is more important than romance. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So marriage will test you. That thing you hate the most is what your partner needs the most. You hate to talk. Your partner wants to talk. You are the kind of person that say, if somebody offend me, I never forgive. You never marry. Because when you marry, forgiveness is our breakfast. We eat it then. And I'm not talking about that you forgive them when they apologize. No. Many times, they will not even apologize. You just forgive. So you see why many people can't make it in marriage? Character is not developed. Forgiveness is compulsory. It has nothing to do with whether the person agree or not. You'll be forgiving, whether they agree or not. You'll be overlooking. Overlooking things. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You'll bring through your mouth when you want to give sharp reply. You even have the best reply. You already have a reply prepared from last night. Because you know they were going to go there. You know they are going to go there. They are going to say that thing. You don't keep the reply for them. Say so you go talk up. And you go give up. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost says, do not give that reply. It might be the truth, but don't say it now. The atmosphere is too tense. If you plant it now, the repercussion cannot be retraced. Somebody getting what I'm saying? can be brought back. Marriage will test your character. How patient are you? Are you patient? You will test it. Can you sacrifice? God will now bless you with children. You will now learn selflessness. Because the average human being is selfish. The average human being is what? Selfish. You don't know how selfish you are till you marry. Then you have to start thinking of another person. You go out anytime you like, come back anytime you like. Now you are married. You must always carry somebody along. You start to learn how to score and say, oh, I'm going to be late or I want to go here. You give account of your stewardship. You spend any how you like. You're just passing. You're selling dog. You just buy. <laughs> you didn't plan before. You just saw it. Everybody's buying. You two just buy. <laughs> when you're married, you now know that we plan all our money. 
you can't just buy. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Marriage will what? Test your character. Test your patience. Test your selflessness. That's why if you're a member of a church and you're not serving now, you're not learning how to serve because marriage is two people serving each other. So when you're in a church like this, serve. The service was easy for me because I've been serving people for years. I was serving thousands of people I wasn't married to. So when I married one, serving her is easy. I serve my wife. There's no big deal. I carry her plate. If she's, if she's in a position, she can't carry it. She said, I don't let your mother see you carry plate. I said, don't worry yourself. I serve my wife. I can't cook. If not, I'll cook for her. But I can't cook. If I cook, it's... <laughs> it's be dangerous to... <laughs> But there's no big deal in those things. If you're those kind of people that you can actually cook, cook for your wife. Those days when, when we had a child, and you know, many of you were applying to relocate you as a man, you better learn how to work now. There's no house help in all those countries you're going to. You're for me, macho man. There's one uh, skit we watched that, uh, I don't know if it's a skit or, or a real, but there's a new couple that they told the man, please come and carry this pampas and throw it away. And it was like me, head of home. You know, I, I'm sure, I believe they were joking, but he said, me, head of home. You see, many men think being head of home means I can't serve. Where do, where do people get this doctrine from? The Bible says he that must be chief or head amongst you, let him what? Serve. This is why women are fighting submission because in Africa or in many men's mind, we see submission as that I'm, I'm, I'm superior. No. If you are the head, it means you are the chief servant. And if you are serving somebody, nobody that you are serving will complain not to submit to you. That's why women submit in barbing salon, I mean hairdressing salon, because the person there is trying to make them more beautiful. So they submit to her. It's not about rank. If the woman knows that what you are doing is for her good, she will submit. Why won't she submit? He said, honey, I'm taking you out next week. She won't submit. She will follow you. She will submit. Just, your instructions are always selfish. That's why she's finding it hard to submit. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So being head of the home doesn't mean you can't walk. Many of you are planning to relocate. You better be ready to sweep, to wash clothes, to iron. You've never washed your toilet before since you got married because you always had house help. You want to relocate. You better start practicing now. How to wash with two hands. Because there's no house help in those places. Are you getting what I'm saying? African men that want to relocate. Hope says, I'll be washcloth. I'll be iron. Your wife can't carry all the load. There's some wicked men like that. Only her should do everything. She's not a slave. And she still has kids to take care of. So most of the time, she's even still working. The one that pay me is even put her in this Africa where there's house help. And you say, I don't want house help. But yet, you can't help the woman. What kind of wicked thinking is that? If you don't want house help, then you'll be the help. Be the man help. But there must be help. For that woman, you can't break her in the name of being the head of, you are the head of the home. Do you even understand what that role means? It doesn't mean you are superior to her. And I've told you last week, there's no way in the Bible God told the man to subject the woman. He was just advising women that the best way to win his heart is by respecting and submitting to him. He, God never told men that, that that information is not to men in any shape or form. So any man quoting, submit to me, you must submit. It's not, it didn't, when, when did God tell you that? There was no such address to men. God spoke to women about that. What they told men is that you sacrificed for your wife. Are you here, somebody? We had a small wedding when we got married. What was I telling my wife? I said, look, Pastor K's wife can't be entering Okadao. So I told her we must have a small wedding, cut everything down. There was no program in my wedding. And I told her the reason why we're cutting it down. You see, most men are trying to force their wives to submit without the element of law. If the wife can see the, that your, your motive for what you're saying, is her benefit and love, 90% of the time she will submit. Is that you, you're you saying it for a selfish reason most times. Let's keep money. Why? Just want you have a plan. If it's, less, it's like, if it's saying, honey, I don't like that we're living in this rented house. See your shoes everywhere. I want us to get our own house so that you will have your walking closet, only you. Your shoes will line up like this. Then this side will be your bags. She will save more than you. <laughs> but most times, <laughs> When you have those vision, it's for young person. You want to build us the village, so that your 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 your, your neighbors can know that the, the son of Chibuafo has arrived from Lagos. Lagos. It's a selfish purpose. That's why she can't see the vision. Include her in the vision. So I told my wife, my, my, "We're getting married." I said, "I don't, I don't want you to jump in a car down. Let's cut all the expenses of the wedding, so that by the time we are after our wedding, I'll buy you a car." That was the vision. After the wedding, we'll have enough money saved from either gifts and everything that we'll be able to buy a car. She was okay with that because she, it was about her. It's not cut wedding expenses. Why? Just cut it. No. Most women look up 
to their wedding day. So if you're going to cut things, there must be a higher purpose, not just for cutting sake. He said, she wants long train. He said, no train, no train. The, the train from Lagos, but it's not enough for you. No. <laughs> a woman wants a glamorous wedding because it's the day she wants to remember. So if you're, if you're going to cut something, it must, it must be a bigger picture, not just cutting for cutting sake. Somebody get what I'm saying? So I told her, there was no program. I wedding, no program. We photocopy it for three, only three photocopy. For the pastor, the MC, and one other person. Three. No program. Wedding ring was a day to the wedding. We bought it. But truly, after the wedding, I bought her a first car. I told her she can't be, she can't be jumping bike as my wife. Do you understand? So, 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 what a woman wants is that sacrificial love. Once she sees that everything you are doing is for her good, sometimes if the woman that is coming from a tough background, she won't believe it or receive it immediately. You must be consistent to teaching her what love means. And after a while, she will start submitting gradually. Are you here, somebody? So don't force it. Don't say, ah, she must submit from day one. No, no, no. Some of them, some people, the background they're coming from, the things they've seen, the experiences they've had, you must love her into submission. Not subject her. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Not step on her. Same thing with you as a woman. Your husband will make many mistakes. You marry him and find out he has so many flaws, so many weaknesses. He's slower. He's, he's just, you know, he's not as detailed. Imagine, see, a woman, a woman is so detailed the information entering her head is so much. See, most women, let me tell you guys, and again, you know, you know this is my field, I'm a professional. Most women have a high tendency to have mental issues, especially marriage-related. I can't count how many people have canceled where the woman was normal when we started the counseling, but because the man didn't change his behavior, and because she too didn't open herself to forgiveness and coping mechanisms, she crossed. I hope you know what that means. Women have a because do you know the amount of information flowing in her brain? She's wired different from a man's own is very slow and moving gently. A woman's own many details. That's why if, if, if a room is scattered, a woman can't sleep. If a room is because she's speaking like this, this chair is not like this. This socks is on the it's, it's jamming her mind. So even if she wants to ignore them, she can't. Because she see the gift of details come with the gift of pettiness. They go together. If you are too detailed, you, you'll be seeing things you should let go of. You will see it. But a man has no details. So that's why if everybody is scattered, the man will find one line. As long as he can put his leg and head somewhere, eh? he goes sleep. Tomorrow we'll continue. Because those details are not, he's not receiving all those details like a woman. So they're not disturbing him. I get what I'm saying. So a woman's gift of details comes with pettiness too. It's not because she's being petty. It's that those information are coming at her at different, at different speed, at high speed. So she's finding fault in everything you're doing. That's why women do more correction of English, more correction of spelling. More, they are picking details. A man can't if he, he manage it like that. He's not seeing any he's not, he's not picking details. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So when you understand, that's why the Bible says, treat your wife according to knowledge. Be patient with her. If you know what she's going through, you understand why she blows over the top sometimes. Why she looks hysterical sometimes. And that's why, look, if you marry a woman, please don't stress her. Because... If she doesn't break down mentally, she can break down emotionally. It really does affect them. So many women are hypertensive today because of who they married. And some have even reached the realm of they need mental help now because one man just kept stressing them. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So marriage will test your character. It will make you look like Christ. Anybody that is successfully married, eh? You resemble Christ. You have learned how to forgive. You have learned how to hold your words till later. The Bible says you mustn't rush to say what's in your mind. Say, keep some till later. It's only a foolish person that says all his mind at once. If you are married, you have learned that it's not every time we should address everything. There are some things you see. It's not everything you see that you must talk about. You see something, just let it go. Because you know that if you open this discussion, we will not sleep today. The Bible said, be quick to hear um, all these are very marital scriptures that singles don't know. You think you know it till you marry. Be quick to hear and be what? Slow to speak. Patience. Discipline. Discipline. The discipline you did not build when you are single, it will shock you in marriage. That's why we beg you single people. And that's why, Pastor Jethro, I'm so sad 
at how the body of Christ is not building disciples and building character. Most of you single Christians, they don't see premarital sex. They don't, it doesn't even cross their mind that premarital sex can be wrong. It doesn't cross their mind. They're going to sleep over in your boyfriend's house is wrong. It doesn't even cross their mind. I'm laughing at you in advance. Because what you don't realize is that the, the lack of self-discipline you have before marriage is the same one that will follow you inside marriage. You, from the day you say, I do, they don't, they don't dash you discipline. If you didn't have discipline when you were single, you won't have it when you're married. And temptations doesn't stop because you're married. That's what people don't realize. So when we are shouting, we don't hate you. We're not trying to judge you. We're just trying to warn you. That if you are dating somebody and some of you are having sex casually, <laughs> just book now for infidelity recovery. Book now because one of them goes to teach it again. Because you are building a culture of no self-control. Marriage won't change temptation. In fact, most of you even find married people more attractive. So when God said, don't touch yourselves, don't have sex for marriage, you are, that stamina you are building is the same thing that will keep you. So two of you now cheat together when you are single. Then you, you are married. You now want the man to become a saint. Somebody that you were cheating with before. Two of you were committing sin before. Now that you are married, you know them, let's be born again. Eh? No. We they take what you know be our own before. Now so we did one. So this is what shocks many people. You are living a life now of frivolity. You are living a life now of laxity. So you want suddenly you become born again. Your wife should just change. For how? If you know you want to affair proof your marriage eh, as a single person, start now by saying, whoever you date, let's practice self-control. It's not because God is wicked. God knows what he's teaching us. If we can't keep up, because the time will come, your wife might not be around. Your husband might not be around. The man might travel for a trip. Your wife might be sick. Your husband might be sick. Your husband might not even perform, performing well. Your wife might not be performing well. What are you going to do then? You'll go and seek satisfaction because you've never learned how to discipline yourself. You can't fast. That's why practices like fasting is building your self-discipline. It's not because God is not getting anything by your fast. It's you that is getting capacity. You can't fast for 10 minutes. Hey, I'm a sit. You're always satisfying your flesh. When you get married, your flesh will also be asking you for things. This is why people, Christians will still go and steal in the office. That's why Christians will go and commit fornication and adultery. Discipline. Discipline. You will need it in marriage. I don't know if I've cancelled a couple that had adultery that there was no fornication in their background. I don't know if I've ever cancelled. 99.9% percent of the couples that deal with adultery, I ask them, was there fornication? Were you guys fornicating before? They all say yes. See, don't go and marry somebody you're fornicating and you want us to just change him for you inside marriage. No, if he's fornicating with you before, he's... See, what somebody's telling you in, when you're fornicating is that, look, I can't control myself. Oh, are you okay with it? You say yes. How do you want him to not control himself or she's controlling herself? <laughs> Same thing. Is it making sense? So we're not trying to punish you. If you're already in a relationship now, it's highly sexual, talk to that person. If he's a Christian, he, will, he, he should desire to please God. If you have no desire to please God, you are marrying the wrong kind of person. Because that's what will keep, that desire to please God eh, is what will help him inside marriage. So if he doesn't have it, please just break up. No, but if he's a real Christian like you, even if you have been having sex before, what of you should sit and have a talk that look, we need, let's serve God well. Let's do this thing right. Let's lay a good foundation. And start now. And be accountable. It's okay to be accountable. Talk to somebody that is in a position that will love you. That will be in a position to protect you and also make sure you guys keep yourselves. If you are not even in a relationship, make up your mind that whenever a guy or a girl is starting with you, it's one of the ground rules that I'm a real Christian. Yeah, we're doing it by the book. Are you here, somebody? There are too many ungodly singles trying to build a godly marriage. Too many what? Ungodly singles. You are both, two of you now are single, you are both shakis. You both drink anyhow. And you suddenly want to enter marriage and both of you will be serious. Why, why are you joking like this now? You are both, two of you are drunks now. Drinking anyhow. Going to club, going to bar. How, does it, how do Christians even go to bar? What do you do in a bar? Have you seen any where people are drinking and discussing scripture? It's your body gene. John 6, 18. <laughs> You John 6, 18, is the gene. Who are the dream? Have you seen it before? There is a lifestyle that goes with it. You're not the first to drink, my brother. You're not the first to start it. This thing you want to do. 
of holding the, holding the world and holding church. People have done it before you. You're not the first. No many people think I'm the one that's creative. I mean, let me know what they do. Shut up! Everybody, many, many, not everybody, many people have tried this nonsense. You try. It didn't end well. You want to hold. You want to, you, you, you. Have you seen any star footballer that is also a star basketballer? The same person. I don't mean local level. I mean star. He's a world star in football. Then he's also a world star. Many people have tried it. Um, Usain Bolt. He tried to go and play for Man U. Even woman you won't take him. Woman you. You can't be the star runner and be a star footballer. Because those two things require concentration. So you want to be a drinker. They know you in club. They hail you in club. They also hail you in church. Now hell. You are playing with hellfire. Because you won't be recognized in any of the two. Jesus said, if you are lukewarm, I will spit out of my mouth. Don't take rubbish. See, it's either you are hot and we know you are hot or you are cold. Let's know where you are. You want to hold the world. You're a born again Christian. You have Bible in your house, but you also have gin in your house. Are you, are you okay? Which one should we drink now? Which spirit should you drink now? The word of God or this gin you have? You say, it depends on who visits me. You see, you're not a reality Christian. You are not yet born again. In our own time, if somebody was born again, there are things you don't even tell him. There are information you don't even say where he is. But today, now, people are born again, no difference. All your friends are alcoholics and you are born again. You are not preaching to them. If they come and they say, oh boy, give us a drink, and you start giving them the Holy Ghost. You start preaching to them. They won't come the next week. But they came. You brought out cupboard, brought out gym for them. And you say, you're a Christian. You're inviting the same drunk ass to church that you drank with yesterday. You're not yet serious. You're not yet serious. Too many ungodly people trying to build godly marriages. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So decide where you want to stand. If you are going to be a Christian, be a Christian true and true. See, there are so many benefits you are missing. On both sides, though, you are missing. You are not sinning like them. And that sin is hellfire. But there are so many benefits in God you are missing by not being totally committed. By not leading your family rights as a man. You are giving your children mixed signals. See you pray this morning, next week. See you step down. Today you drink Holy Spirit, next day you drink under Spirit. He said, how long shall you be between two opinions? If Baal be God, serve him. But if God be God, serve him. You are between two opinions. Tomorrow, today you are born again, tomorrow you are born against. Choose one. Let's know where you are. Choose one. You are born again club goer. <laughs> the madness of this generation. Some people give their profile on Instagram. Jesus girl. How does Jesus get show her bomb? What's happening? Jesus' daughter. It's her bomb she's showing. You're not born again. You're not ready. <laughs> You're not ready to let go of the world. You want to hold the world and hold church together. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You have to hold this thing tight. It works. There's so much to gain. So much you're losing. By being of two opinion. I see some people you shake. Start talking on that talk. When you come to church, you change again. It's chameleon life won't help you. Be straight. Let, your, let all your worldly friends know that you're a changed person. See, many times they will even need help from somebody like you, but they can't ask you because you're a sinner with them. All these people laughing with you and drinking with you, you think that they're inside them, they have needs that they know. Is a, see, if you know the people that come to him for counseling, you don't want to know the people that come to him of every religion. Every rank, from politicians to major generals to any way you want to think about it, your, your entertainers, many of them come. So, those people you see drinking and playing, doing hey, with a drink, inside them, they are looking for something. But unfortunately, you that are near them, they do hey, they give you to drink. Because you have low self esteem. But they had a spiritual question. They need somebody to pray for them. They can't ask you because you are drunk too with them. If you stand well, maybe you'll be the one. When they know they really need real prayer, they know which of their friends they are going to call. Not the drunk one that drank with them yesterday. When they have real marriage problem, they know who to call. Not you. Because you carry babies with them. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Do this thing well. If you're going to do it well. If you're not going to do it well, leave it. But if you're doing it, do it well. There's so much to gain. So much to gain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Were you blessed this morning?
Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Give the Lord a big hand. Please clap for Mr. and Mrs. Arugudari. For my clothing, don't forget, go and follow her and patronize her. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift our hands? Stand up and lift your hand. And say, Lord, I open myself. That through me, godly, a godly marriage will come. I will not just be a lukewarm. Play that keyboard. I will not just be a lukewarm Christian. I will not just be an ordinary Christian. I will be one of those that will be on fire for you. Monday, so kababa. Just talk to the Lord this morning. Zebra da sakada la babrodesa. Talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. Zamambro da sakadaya. Lord, we will build a godly home in our own time. 